Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. It's all in the presentation. It's just like bass fishing. You know, unless you present it just right, the uh, bass will not strike. Well, same thing with some snakes. Some snakes you don't have to worry about. Other snakes are a little particular about uh, how they consume food. There you go. And trying to help. No, you don't want any help? Okay. Yeah, yeah. See what I mean? <laughs> Alright, so that's three. I got number four in here. If she doesn't want it, I'm certain there are uh, other critters in the room that will happily adjust it. their face, that signals pretty much the end of the, the feeding session. No, we're going to go for one more. Okay, there you go, girl. There you go, girl. Okay, so let's uh, move you back. Oh, boing. Come on. Oh, now that coil comes out. All right, let's do this then. There you go, girly. There's your feed for the week. You folks might wonder, well, why is Viper Keeper propagating so many saw scales and stuff? Well, primarily, uh, I really enjoy the, the animals. Saw scales are very cool snakes. Um, they're e relatively easy to keep. They're compact. They don't require a lot of space like some of the other guys that we have in the collection. But most importantly, uh, their venom is quite uh, valuable uh, for two reasons. One, medical research. Two, uh, production of anti-venom. Uh, so 
these animals and some of their offspring are going to go off to uh, various venom labs that I work with, like uh, the Kentucky Reptile Zoo and M Toxins. Um, uh, the KRZ primarily does a lot of uh, supply of venom for, for a lot of research. Uh, whereas M Toxin Labs, uh, I know uh, anything African um, is going to be used for antivenom production because of the great shortage of, of antivenom in Africa. So uh, that's why we're we're breeding, you know, some uh for these projects because it's not always easy to, to import uh, from the wild. Um, it's a slow process due to the low reproductive rates of uh, most of the species of Echis. So Shurukii, the big girl over there in the cage with her head on the log, that species is the only one that gives live birth. And that girl's current uh, rate is to produce about 40 babies per breeding. That's why she's in a cage by herself <laughs> and the male uh, is down below. Uh, 40 babies is a little too much to deal with. Uh, um, they're a bit tricky to get feeding. As I said, they're highly toxic, and you wouldn't want to get bitten by them. Uh, now, for instance, uh, you know, the Echisozolatus babies that we have, you know, that mother tried to, tried to drop 24 eggs, and she, she perished. She got egg bound, and there was nothing we could do for her. Fortunately, three babies hatched and they're doing quite well. Uh, Echis coloratus right above. Um, I got a, a recently a, obtained a wild caught male but uh, I had a significant parasite load and perished. I couldn't save it um, and I was hoping to breed her again. Uh, she only pops out four or five eggs like the Echis pyramidum. Um, Echis leucogaster. I have the male Echis leucogaster over here. He's in protective custody. <laughs> he was in with the girls, but there was this one female that just kept on biting him on the head. He, he you know, I, I almost lost him uh, at one point, and so. <laughs> He's in protective custody until January when I will just put them in there and not try to feed them. So this is a this is a little bit of my Echis project that I got going. I have Sochirukii, uh, Pyramidum, Leucogaster, Ocelatus, and Coloratus. Um, I think there's eight species total. I haven't been able to get any of the others yet. but. Uh, I hope to do that uh, down the road. Are you ready for another, huh? Relax. <laughs> Is that okay, bud, huh? Is that okay? He's except you know, as long as you're not uh, mistaken for food, that is a pretty chill snake. There you go, dude. That's your allotment for the week. Now look at him. He's, you know, he doesn't have a scale spread. Uh, you know, he's not uh, not obese. He's very solid, uh, and that's why I only give him two uh, two mice a week. Um, he's in a lapid, so his metabolism is, is much higher than, you know, the viperids, uh, cause he cruises around and keeps poor Slinky awake by falling off the upper ledge here. <laughs> That's why we call him Thud, of course, because we're down in the living room, uh, watching TV or something, all of a sudden we hear thunk, 
and we know it's thud uh, falling off the ledge. Uh, and that's how legends are born. <laughs> and no doubt poor Slinky is downstairs quietly cursing to himself. Uh, yes. Yes, indeed. We missed. Yeah, you slid and got a mouthful of substrate. Oh well. Let's see what the other one does. Mm. Just hammered it. The only time we see them is they pop out just long enough to tag the prey <laughs> item and that's it. Yes, unless of course it's in the middle of the night. This is and true. then this one's here at the window like Hi, I'm ready for food. Well, I'm just going to vacuum uh, whatever you give me up because I've been uh, off feed for the past probably six weeks. Um, it's breeding season for Boom Slang, and uh, I'm sure he was detecting Bucky's uh, uh, breeding status from the other room, uh, but I've decided <laughs> not not to feed, uh, not to breed Boom Slangs. Um, although I really want to, um, babies are just. Uh, and difficult to uh, uh, find homes for, and uh, you know, Bucky gets all stressed out when she, he's, he's you know, it's being incessant, uh, uh, wanting to breed. So I'm just going to keep them separately uh, for now. Bucky may pop out some unfertilized ova later in the year, but mm, that's okay. Um, he is hungry now all of a sudden. Mm. <laughs> it's like, okay. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Yep. You know, it's not my fault. Uh, I offered him food during that six-week period, and he chose not to eat. He wasn't interested. Nope, wasn't interested. So now he's going to eat everything in sight to make up for it. Yes, and I'm not moving because I do not want a repeat of being chased across the room. Uh, yes, well, I'm, uh, I'm watching it. And making sure I can have something that I can stuff into his mouth uh, right away. See uh, that Jararaka's got the mouse, and the other one is out looking around and seeing what happened to it. It's right in front of you, dude. To your right. No, you're going wrong. the other right. You're going the wrong way. Normally, that snake lives on top of the hide and normally eats on this side. So I'm thinking it's like, oh, well, maybe it's over here. Well, maybe not, too. <laughs> you really, uh, uh, chewing this one up. This will be his last last one for today. And uh, she's uh, figured out what the other right is. Sort of. I'm looking. Oh, there it is. It's way over there. I was going to give Slinky a drink of water when I'm done with him. 
She found it, or he found it. Excuse me. Sorry, dude. That one's taking you some time, huh, bud? Oh, he, he doesn't eat. He's just been chewing one end to the other. Tenderizing? Yeah. Certainly uh, pushed a lot of venom into it because, you know, their, their venom is not like your typical pit viper. Uh, it sort of flows continuously down the groove in their fangs. Uh, so I'm sure that one got quite a load of venom, although it was already dead. Oh, I see your head coming up for a view. Swallow it. I'm not going anywhere unless you chase me. <laughs> See, that's why I was holding very still because, you know, boomslangs are sight feeders and uh, you don't want to be in their line of sight. Yes, I learned that the hard way. Okay, so. And you're just finishing up on yours. You can look over my shoulder. Hello, Slink. I, I bring water, no food. Here you go, bud. This is something I've done with Slinky since I, I got him like in 2005. You know, I think he got injured in, uh, in the wild. Uh, his, his jaw is sort of slacky on one side. And that seems to be all that he wants. And it's never fun staring a mamba in the face, so we'll get out of there. Yep, and look who's... Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> yes, he got all he's going to get for the day. He's still very pretty. He has some beautiful color, but... Yeah, it's looking more and more like he's eventually going to go all black like uh, Bucky. And it's such a shame because, oh, he was really spectacular when he was younger. If he'd sort of stay in this phase, that would be quite beautiful. All right, so long. This yearling. Kwame, who was a female and quite a good feeder, uh, we're going to move up to a little bit larger quarters for her, a little bit more natural setting. I know, let go. Oh, yeah. There you go. Now sh she'll be butt hurt for days, so I just fed her yesterday. And she looks a little milky right now. So she could be by her for a few days. Go into her hut, which has a nice hot spot. I just put some water underneath uh, to make sure the humidity stays up. And we'll note that she's in shed and should be misted uh, daily, even though she won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> they never do. But uh, yeah, she's getting, she's a yearling, so. Um, We'll see how, uh, how she does. I've got a boy that's unrelated waiting for her. I still think she's a little young yet, but we'll see. Maybe I'll breed her this midsummer when she's a little older. She doesn't 
doesn't look too enthusiastic about the moon, <laughs> does she? They're never very grateful for when we give them nice new quarters. They tend to get very angry. Uh, yep, yeah, they certainly do. Let's put our labels over here. She might be a little bit happier if I offered her food when I moved <laughs> her, but she ate yesterday in anticipation of this move because you know snakes that uh, get moved take a couple weeks to acclimate and get back on food uh, the Egyptian saw scales that were in this rack that I moved across the way um, they were eating fine since they were infants and stuff and I moved them to a bigger cage uh, two out of the three are finally after three weeks back on feed the uh, the third one still isn't eating, so uh, it's just the way it is. Snakes don't like change as, you know, just like humans don't like change.